forget the metaverse. Meta is going all in on artificial intelligence. And we've been telling you how engaged CEO Mark Zuckerberg has been about this. But he just revealed in the past couple of days that the social media giant has placed a massive order with NVIDIA for at least 350,000 GPUs. Those are graphic processor units. They're the microchips that boost generative AI services at Again, at least $25,000 per chip. Zuckerberg is throwing more than $10 billion, right, into this arms race, which he promises will responsibly create open source AI for all. Well, just last night, a premier source for AI development swatted at that claim by the Facebook parent. Scientist Gary Marcus posted on X that in 2021, it was estimated that 100,000 inappropriate pictures a day were sent to kids, and Meta could not figure out how to use AI to stop it. So how is the social media giant going to figure this out? Joining me now is NYU psychology and neuroscience professor and geometric intelligence founder Gary Marcus. Uh, Gary, me thinks you sound a bit skeptical, but if you're, if you're judging by what they were able to do in 2021, AI has really made leaps and bounds of gains in its abilities over just the past year. So are you being fair when it comes to at least the promises that AI, at least on behalf of Meta, could clean something up? It has and it hasn't. Th think back to when Zuckerberg went to the Senate and famously he said, Senator, we sell ads. The other thing at that famous testimony is he said to the senators, we're going to solve the fake news problem. And he certainly hasn't. Mm. If you think about AI and whether it understands whether it's reading, whether it's true or not, it doesn't. In fact, the word of the year, um, according to dictionary.com for 2023, was uh, hallucinations. And that's a kind of quasi-technical term for these systems make stuff up all the time. There's actually a lot of problems with current AI. Zuckerberg is talking about getting to general intelligence. We're actually pretty far uh, from general intelligence. We have a new form of AI. People call it generative AI that can solve some problems. It's very helpful for computer programmers, but it also makes a lot of mistakes all the time. It's not really reliable. I don't think we're actually all that close to generative AI. Even Zuckerberg's own chief AI officer has recently said that large language models, quote, suck, um, which is to say that the technology we have right now is not fully baked. And I, I think that that's realistic. We're just not all the way there. Then we could maybe talk later about the notion of meta AI doing anything responsibly. Well, let's talk about what AI itself has been able to do and what it can't do, because it, it uses what is input. It's only as good as what goes in. So if junk goes in, junk is going to come out. Now, OpenAI was trying very hard to feed in a bunch of legitimate news sources and their information. And boom, the New York Times said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't get to train your open AI chatbot, chat GPT, with our content if you're not paying us for it. They filed suit. They, they are uh, alleging copyright infringement. They are litigating. Uh, open AI says it's without merit. But which side do you believe is, is really going to win on this? I think it'll probably settle. Um, I don't think OpenAI can remotely afford for it to go to court because there's a chance a precedent would be set which said you just can't use copyrighted materials. And they literally just told the House of Lords in the UK that they cannot make their software work without using copyrighted sources. So what's really going to have to happen is that OpenAI and all of these big gen AI companies are going to have to license the stuff. And that's going to cut heavily into their profit margins. So OpenAI can't afford to lose in court. So that gives the New York Times a lot of leverage, I think, to craft a settlement. And there'll be an issue of money, <clears throat> excuse me, but there'll also be an issue of whether or not OpenAI can even use their stuff. So the Times might say, OK, mm -hmm. you can use stuff yeah. that's a year old, but you can't use anything else. That's our deal. Take it or leave it. And OpenAI can't really live without it. They don't really have the means to train without it, without retraining, which retraining uh, GPT-5 might cost a billion dollars. Well, yeah, because so I think actually that you've got to have the updated information. And basically, if it just spews out near exact verbiage, that's plagiarism. But you have started in the past couple of months to look specifically and discuss specifically on your Substack articles about visual plagiarism. Explain what we're looking at That's here. Right. Is that Ragnarok? I don't even know who that is. But um, 
So, so Thanos, um, this Thanos, particular sorry, image Thanos. was done. <laughs> okay, what Thanos, are we looking at here? It was done by a collaborator of mine who works in the film industry, and he, what you're seeing here are pairs. And he discovered, you know, the image on the left versus the image on the right. Um, you're looking at an actual image from a film and something that a system called Mid Journey makes. And so, yeah, it's hard to see this as anything other than plagiarism. And then Reed Southen and I did a series of experiments and show that you could get this almost by accident. In these particular examples you have on the screen, he was deliberately saying, well, look, show me Scarlett Johansson and Black Widow. But then he, we did other experiments where we'd say things like, show me an Italian plumber. So not asking for anything from any particular place. Oh, and you boy. would wind up um, essentially infringing on the trademark of Mario from Nintendo. Okay, so, yeah, so um, all, yeah, here's let's just be clear. Mark. All you fed in was, show me an Italian plumber and up comes Super Mario. Up, up comes Mario. Or um, someone else read some about our experiments and did an even more striking experiment. They said, show me a golden droid that is not C-3PO. And these things don't really understand language. They don't really understand the word not. And out came C-3PO when they said, don't make C-3PO. Or here in these examples, we just said Italian plumber. And the system is making Italian plumber. And importantly, it's not t telling the end user what its sources are. So that's exactly what plagiarism right. is, well, is when you recreate something in someone else and you don't say what it, where you got it. From. Gary, that's we only exactly got a few seconds is. left, but how are we going to put this genie back in the bottle and regulate this? Do we have to make sure that metadata is embedded into every photograph? Like, oh, this is owned by Getty Images, or oh, this photographer took this picture and you can't use it, it's copyrighted. The problem is that the, the AI that we're using right now takes a whole lot of images, breaks them into little pieces, and then makes its best guess about how to put them back together again. But it loses track of what it's doing. And so they literally can't attribute what they've gotten from where. So the only solution is for them to license the images. And that's going to be very expensive. It's going to cut into the profit margins. And I think the consequence is that the valuations we're seeing for these big gen AI companies are way higher than they're probably going to ultimately land. Let's so leave. OpenAI is at $86 billion. Once licensing and litigation are factored in, I just don't think that's sustainable. Let's leave our viewers with a poll that you've just in the last couple of minutes put up on Twitter. And the poll asks, which company would most responsibly handle creation of generative, generative AI? And at the moment, Alphabet Google gets 44 percent, and Thropic, which has the Claude chatbot, a lot of companies are using them, 38 percent. Meta at just 2 percent, OpenAI at just 16 percent. Uh-oh. That's right. If Mike Zuckerberg wants to rebrand Meta AI as the responsible AI company, he has a lot of work to do. The company has just not been seen in that way. That's going to make it hard to recruit people working on responsible AI. So, you know, I wish him luck. I hope that the company will be more responsible in its approach okay. to AI, but that's not how they're seen right now. Professor Gary Marcus, good to see you. Thank you very much. Great seeing you.